Aura, Luna with Aura. That's pretty scary as well. I think the Jakiro is the only way that works because normally, even if you have high damage, the tower kills the creeps too fast That's to actually truth, push yeah. up into the 10 minute racks. So I think without Jakiro, they're still going to apply a lot of pressure, no doubt about that. Like, Is, there, is, is this a Broodmother game? I mean, it's a hero that we've kind of, kind of forgotten, but. If you're four men pushing and you have a Broodmother in different lane, that's kind of scary. Look at the support. Is ET Skyrath going to do anything against the Brood? I mean, is Terrible going to do anything against the Brood? Yeah, it's definitely a game where you could go for Broodmother. It's, you know, doable. It's available. No more bans for C9 as well. But in such a high pressure situation where you have to win? Broodmother is easy execution. You I don't put know webs, if you're going to pick spiders. a hero that you've never played in a competitive Look, game. Look, man, I'm sure Sadoi oh. was like spamming Brood games last night. It's like, I got this. I think they still go with something like Centaur. Yeah, like that. I reckon Sadoi won't be playing it, but I would be extremely happy to One see it. One can dream, you know? One can dream. Yeah. And for C9, they're just taking their time now as well, thinking over the options. They know the pressure is going to come early. They need something that's strong enough to hold on to the early game here. They've been mostly going back to the Centaur for that. I'm not, again, I'm not sure yeah, if Centaur is... Fata doesn't have his hero, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Fata has played Centaur really well earlier as well. It synergizes well with the bat, so I think that that might be what they gravitate towards. I think it synergizes well with the Terrorblade as well. Just managed to always bail him out because he's a, such an important hero to protect. Yep, there it is. And they are going to go for it. All right, so VP, what is your answer to this? Mother comes. Mother comes. Nah, not against Centaur, Bat, and ET. Like three of those heroes have enough deep push, I think, to where Brood wouldn't really accomplish a whole lot. Dude, it's all about that laning stage. Get control, get Necrobook, push towers. No, by Dagon. Oh, yeah. Professional Dagon is not bad. By Dagon's, yep. I uh, know a guy who played like over 700 games of Broodmother. He loves Dagon. Holy it's amazing. Moly. <laughs> what kind of scumbag plays Brood <laughs> 700 games? Well, the worst type of person, Draskal. Jeez, I thought I was a terrible person for picking like Invoker like 10 games. Yeah. It's good to know that there are people out there who are scummier than I am. I mean, there's even a guy who picked like over a thousand games of Treant. I yeah, guess that guy likes to sleep while he plays. That's but. a little different. All right, so Doi's going to pick up LC for himself. I like it against the bat. Uh, it, it's, it's good to stop the chain of initiation. Good against the Terrible yeah. as well. Yeah, illusions, bye-bye. Yeah, deals tons of damage as well with a nuke, which is a very good way to deal with Terrible And that is going to be the two drafts here. Right, so on the Legion Commander. Are they going to put Fata top again and then just end up doing Terrorblade mid like they have been doing? And then have Bone7 sit in the woods and then... I think so. Pi and Aoi kind of just do whatever? I think against a Death Prophet that could nuke your health. Are you fine? I think Storm harass much more physically, right? Whereas DP just going to... Yeah, but there are worse heroes to come in and do anything. Like, previously he has been playing mid against the Skywrath, throwing bolts at him all the time, and still he had a 17-minute Manta style. So sending E mid... Use the Morphous to secure some denies against the DP before she gets high level on her nuke. Very nice little meeple. And of course, for those who are wondering, we are actually on TB6 right now, which means that we have to take a 30 second intermission for their sake. Well, not, not you and I. No, 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 but I'm saying like, we're not hopping into the game immediately. Mm. Right? Yeah. So if people were wondering. Esports. Welcome to Esports. On TV. On TV. Not us. Not them. us, but them. Yes. The Swedish guys. The Swedish. You're Swedish. I'm not Swedish enough. Not enough. I didn't pass the test. You're from Skåne, right? What is the test? Uh, it's like I never ate Suströmming, so they don't like Ooh. me. Yeah. Isn't that the fermented fish? Yeah. It's pretty bad. I've never actually <laughs> even had the opportunity to smell it, and I think I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm pretty sure you don't like fish in general. That's true. Well, you don't like fish either, do you? No, but I did have the salmon. Okay. At the Twitch party? Yeah, okay. I remember now. It was like a, a pre-party. It was the smallest salmon ever. I had to order an extra steak, steak just to make up for it. Um, yeah, we see the players sitting here. G, thinking things over. And Rage, casually writing zeros. So, in terms of these drafts, you have Terrorblade, Centaur, Skywrath, Eternal, uh, <laughs> Eternal Titan, Elder Titan, <coughs> Batrider. 
against Treant, Luna, DP, Legion, Venge. Which lineup do you really favor? Like, which would you want to play in? I actually like VP's lineup a lot. Yeah? I think that their early to mid-game pressure is insanely tough to deal with. Oh, here we go. Virtus Pro smoked up here. And this is game five between VP and Cloud9. Loser goes home as third place. And winner moves on to face Evo Geniuses. I can't the believe it went all the way to best of five yeah. after 2-0. Two two yeah. I, I, I believe that whole time. Never doubt it. <laughs> that, that's a classic C9 fanboy <laughs> lie right there. All right, oh. the smoke's going to go high ground. MVZ watching. He is. He's oh. going to walk away. 315 base movement speed. And he's so smart. And they're looking like to drop the same aggressive ward that was placed in game one, yeah. or at least that was a good Bating read it. by C9. I mean, yeah. he knew that there's a high probability they will walk up this ramp and stood in a good position to reveal smoke and run away. There's not the most impressive catching heroes on VP, at least not level one, so. Well, Sentry is already coming out, and Pilot I should have a very good read where that ward is. Yeah. This is just VP trying to stop the Batrider because he always relies on getting that farm in jungle, but it's not going to do much, I think, since uh, C9 immediately knew about this. Well, the other thing is, too, is if you happen to find like a first blood or something like that, it really helps your momentum. Like, you use the smoke, you go five man, you get a kill on anyone, it really does help. Oh, it's the aggro try Luna, though. Huh. Well, in terms of a 1v1, Batrider is going to have a grand old time against LD. Yes, you can use press the attack to debuff the stacks, but just being a ranged hero to harass, that's good enough. The question is, can Cloud9 withstand this kind of aggressive play on top? But, you know, it's Falta there, so... I mean, two... C9 could win mid really hard and make up for whatever is that's happening true. on top lane. And I think that's their goal. Look at this. This is going to be a pretty easy time for Total Envy just farming up, I believe. Yeah. Although Tower Shot going on Pile I Die, he's actually t taking a ton of damage. Oh, he's used to that. Taking like Tower Shot. Just walking into towers for free. I mean, he's all right. Got to be careful. The rotation is going to come in from Yo to give a little bit of support on the mid lane. But it's actually good for Envy because he's able to CS right now without using Metamorphosis, which is kind of how you CS in the early game. So getting some freebie lasts here for him. Yeah, but also DP at Top least. lane here, it looks like BCC gets stunned up. The Leech Seed is trying to heal him up, but he's taking a ton of damage. He do not want to give up First Blood on the offensive tri lane. What a nice start there for C9. Centaur with First Blood is such a big momentum. A lot of important gold for him there. How did they even get close? Well, I mean, if you ever do get close, Luna is so squishy. She's really easy to kill, especially as a Centaur. You have tons of nuke damage. And oh, Yol. Yol, he's over here getting stapled right now. Uh -oh. Fata's coming in. I mean, he does not have enough mana for a stomp right now. Throws a stun onto Fata anyway. Yeah. He might be actually in trouble oh, here. Enough. I think that's enough. The, the bolt the coming through. Yep. Two kill going to Cloud9. That was some sick execution there. Really nice play by C9. Now in the draft, something we said is that VP has this lineup that has just has to win in 15 minutes. Giving away two kills in the beginning is not how you win in 15 minutes, so... Yeah, your aggro try really suffers by these kills because you give away so much experience to C9 that they could potentially shut you down on that lane. And how do you scale into mid-game? How do you pressure down towers if you don't get the momentum? Yeah, it's definitely not the best scenario at all. And we're going to have a pause here. Oh, no, it's not the same problem that they were having, right? Well, I think Virtus Pro didn't have the problem I'm previously. I'm pretty sure they had lag, sound issues, and now FPS issues. So we soon we have had it all. That's true, which means that when we get into the grand finals, there's not going to be any problems left because yeah. we've fixed them all. We've had all the issues. All right. So the way the lanes are going right now, I mean, Sedoya has been doing pretty much dead even with Bone 7. They actually have identical CS up until this point. It's going to be down to who has, I think, the higher impact in these 1v1 matchups. Like, what can Sedoi do and what can Bone 7 do? Because he always seems to be able to find his picks. He gets early blink daggers. And being able to pick off heroes like Death Prophet, for example, I think actually cripple VP's lineup so much more than if VP are able to get, like, a pick off on even a core, just because of what their lineup is meant to do mm. and how long they actually have to accomplish it. I can agree in general that if you pick off the DP, that will stunt VP completely. But in general, getting a pick off when you have DP on your team, you can easily turn that into something more, though. So I still think both the heroes are really, really core here. The Batrider and the Legion, what kind of impact they can play. 
That's definitely true. Um, in terms of the heroes around the Roshan fight, in terms of like sieging or defending, I think Batrider is where I'm more comfortable with, giving the high ground, or flying vision is exactly where you want to be. So even though they're farming well, I think I would ha want the Batrider uh, if I'm Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, for C9, it's a great hero to have, especially when you have a player so solid as Stone 7 on it. Yep. I'm actually completely surprised that Cloud9 has not had to use Metamorphosis just yet. Like, Envy's just farming. I think it's weird that he didn't, though, because 12 CS on the DP, I thought they would shut him down even more. But, you know, because if you have the, the Metamorphosis early on, level 1 Crypt Swarm is not guaranteeing you any CS. Even level 2 is going to be pretty hard to time completely against that last hit of Terrorblade. That's true. And I think... Denying the DP early on here is really important because from level 5 and onwards, she's going to deal tons of damage to TB. That's where she starts taking over the lane. Yeah, and even though there's been some kills going the way of Cloud9, this top lane from VP isn't really going that bad. Like, it's 12-2 and two for BZZ. Plata has three creep kills. So even with those pickoffs, sure, it matters a lot, but at the end of the day, the farm's still going the way of VP. Yeah, very heavily as well. So nice. Nice, calm and collected play by VP to even after dying twice up there, still holding on to that lane very nicely. I think it's at some point, like, if G just continues this, spams, he has pretty easy time controlling the runes because he knows that he has two supports sitting in top lane. And honestly, if the Batrider ever goes to a rune, it's pretty obvious. And I think Bone7 is actually doing that now. He's just pushing out bottom with his Firefly. So yeah. Envy is stacking jungle with an illusion meanwhile here while he lanes mid. So yep. going to get a nice big stack here without wasting any time from anyone. Yeah, and Pi is also stacking the Ancient. So we're going to have a field party if they oh. actually get farmed by top lane again. Cloud9, they get yet another kill. Yeah, getting too close. They could maybe even run down here on the Vengeful. She does not have any boots. Well, look okay. at the right clicks here. The movement speed is okay. pretty fast. One more double edge, but looks like they see the TP. Common collected, maybe it's Cloud9. They're not getting a lot of CS, but Centaur doesn't need it if you're going to kill people left and right. Yeah, and a lot of it goes to Aoi. He's playing a really core part on that top lane. Normally, we talk about how ET is a very weak laning support this game. Oh, definitely not in yeah. this game. Yeah. Aoi is making us eat that statement. I think a lot of it's due to Yol's positioning. Like, both times BZ has died, Yol has not been there. And that time he didn't even use a stun. So I think it's more just the lane of it, like itself, is way out of position most of the time. And the Ooh. supports are not where they need to be. Highlight die gets found, oh, but he, he misses, misses the Crypt Swarm. One more kill will do it. Oh, One more hit. Right, there you go. Base movement speed, reach Witchcraft. Yeah, Witchcraft is really, really good. And he has his boots coming out as well. Gonna be just fine. But this top lane, gotta go again here on Jotham. Yeah, Stomp's going to be there. Double edge to follow it up. The tree armor comes out. And he will be fine for the time being. Something we said in the past about Elder Titan uh, when he was playing as an offlane core is that he's good against tri lane because his spirits get a lot of target to hit on. And then he gets the damage and movement speed. Well, not exactly a core here, but doing a lot as well. Back in the mid lane, Sunder to initiate oh, against G. Nice. G's going to sell, but the bow is going to bring him down. One more right click. He's tracing into the trees. He's so fast, the, though. The bow should do it. And the living oh. armor. Oh, oh he's, he's like surviving. Living armor. And witchcraft. Wow. Just what wow. an ability. Yeah, three and showing just why he can be very nice to protect that mid laner. Yep. That was a nice attempt by C9, though. Very close to securing a huge kill. Yep, so Envy will go his uh, patented bottle, sending Illusion bottom. Looks like Sedoi picks that one up. I think it's fine when you're playing a mid TB, and even as Mystery said, bottle on TB makes a lot more sense than bottle on AM for me. He still makes it work on AM though, but it's it's not necessarily amazing. But on TB, I definitely think it's a great item. My question is, these early game deaths, like it's giving Cloud9, I think, a lot. But have they actually gotten enough kills? Because I still look at Fata, and I, I mean, he has 10 CS. Like sure, two kills is good. He's got 900 gold right now. He might be able to farm up a bit. I think VP are maybe playing this a little bit more passive now. Envy in a lot of trouble. Another hit into Crypt Swarm. Can't get the kill. And oh. nicely done. G. 
I mean, he recognized that his Crypt Swarm does so much damage. They're not even done here. G with a high movement speed can get another Crypt Swarm, a couple more right click here. Yeah, Skyrath is a very fast hero, though. This is optimistic, as at least as he does have Here boots. comes Bone 7. He's got Lasso. Can he drag him on high ground? He could. They're fighting about it, but another Crypt Swarm can't get the kill. Oh, Cooldown on one fly. second. He needs to Firefly away. One more Crypt Swarm. Ooh. 42 health. All right, so how is G able to make so much happen on a hero with no disables and just walks around spamming Crypt Swarm? I think that's more so Envy playing too aggressively or too cocky. Yeah. I mean, he is surprising, though. G can make things happen. He, he does the same on a Viper. I mean, all you have is right click, pretty much. <laughs> Still manages to find people going out of position. So he does extremely well know when he can pressure his advantage. But uh, this top lane, as you mentioned, Centaur only on 16 CS. The bigger part is, he's level 6 now. Yeah. And that is massive for C9. So next time Batrider wants to gank someone, it could be really dangerous. Yeah, those Crypt Swarm chase kills would not happen anymore. Uh, easy to disengage with Stampede. Well, the game is slowing down right now, but the key thing to point out in the mid lane is that MV is no longer farming. He's trying to stack the jungle, but eventually he has to go back for those stacks. In fact, Fata looks like the rune. <laughs> Nice deny, but Stampy's gonna get used here. They want G. Does they ha do they have reflection? Looks like they he don't. Is so dead. Okay. Yeah, there is no way he's living through that. Living armor, actually not good against fire. Yeah. Also, Stampy just playing in so much. They're bringing in the Batrider close enough for that kill. Yeah. And it's tough. It's tough playing against Centaur. You never know when you're out of position. Suddenly, one Stampede and the enemy close distance on you. I mean, G. You could argue he was going way out of position, but he, it really didn't look like it from his perspective. Yeah. I mean, Centaur is just an amazing hero. I think back in Star Ladder, uh, Tide Hunter was kind of the definite go-to offlane, but for me, more and more, it has become the Centaur, just for movement and plays like those. Yeah. The engage, the disengage. I think so, too. Both heroes are amazing, but Centaur maybe even more so. Yep. And now with Bone 7, kind of uh, jungling a little bit, gives a link. He's got his blink money right now. Yeah. Nine minute blink. So if you're Virtus Pro, your game plan is to take multiple towers. I, I'm thinking you're off the game plan now, right? Like it's, yeah, it's just not working. You're already on the back foot, I think. Yellow's going to run into Howie here inside of the woods and he's going to make his way towards the lane. They might be able to get a kill here. They know there's no stampede for at least yeah, a little while longer. A Yellow with the stun. Yeah, that's Looks it. like VP is going to be able to get this one. He's going to get the last hit. Goes in for a stomp. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Give it a to lot the of damage to BZZ. Oh. Yeah, plenty of damage over on Luna, but still, she's going to regenerate just fine here. Nice kill to get, but as you said, we're almost 10 minutes in. No tower has been pressured at all from VP so far. They don't even have Exorcism up yet on the level 8 VP, but once they have, I think they need to start going and training down towers because Batrider, he will punish you if you wait too long. Same with Terribly. I think just having the blink is already being in a position where you are punished. Because if you try to go in, think of how hard it is to break stuff like oh, high ground. Oh, trying to run, Lasso. but he's going to get dragged up on the high ground. I think it's no. not going to last long enough, but he's still taking a ton of damage. Here comes a stampede for the secondary slow. Flame break available. Sedoi taking so much damage. He's popping all his regen, but Bone 7 will find himself another kill. Well, the first one, but, you know. Yeah. And he has smoke available for the next one, too. I think it's actually just way too dangerous to go for runes now if you're VP. Like, Batrider is so good at going for runes. Skyrath is great in small engagements. You have Stampede also to worry about. I don't think unless you're bringing another hero with you that going to a rune is even worth it. The one scenario where I feel that they're stronger right now is that they can just go as five and start training. Because sure, you have Batrider to grab one guy, and Elder Titan is pretty good, but so far, the fighting potential from C9 in a full team fight is not amazing. Whereas VP have a lot of tools to work with. I think they need to start doing that. I think, though, if you find man up, you're giving up any resemblance of a mid game you have. Because if you look at Sedoi, he's not close to his blink. And unless he gets like two, three kills on the five man, he's actually not going to get any farm. Oh, overgrowth here on the bone seven. Is Yul going to be able to get a range in time? The Firefly is still on. Oh, bone he seven's going to fly him, away. But he can't reach. Nice. Nah, he's only level four, man. Swap is a dream oh, yeah. right now. Poor man. Yeah, I'm worried, very worried about Sedoi because if he doesn't get a blink and make himself useful in the next two, three minutes, I think VP is in really a lot of trouble. Because if you look at the mid game, Trin as a supporter is just not that effective. Yeah, they're going to bring down the mid tower now. Most likely C9 not going to fight against it. But already 
We're heading into mid game and C9 are starting to run away with it. Look at Terrorblade and what he's managed to achieve, even though he hasn't been that relevant yet. He's getting stronger. And Terrorblade's one of those heroes that even if you are under farmed, if you're left alone to hit towers for even like 10, 20 seconds, you pretty much kill a tier one. You don't have to have like a Manta and a Scotty to have impact in terms of split pushing. It's just about how much room your team can create for you. And I think Cloud9 are maybe one of the best teams in the business when it comes to that. Yeah, even though the gold graph doesn't really show it, I feel like Cloud9 has taken a countless amount of ancient stacks, jungle camps, or Batrider. Oh, they, they're pinging the Tranquil boots. They're like, can we... If they could gank him and take a Tranquil... Okay, never mind. Right. The hype. The hype. The fake hype. They're like, we'll settle for Fata oh, oh, instead. Oh, swap him? Oh, the oh, swap's okay, gonna be there. Oh, no. They he could actually have stampede to run a little bit further away, but yeah. it looks like he didn't need to. Imagine what a level 6 Vengeful could do for you. Yeah. If but, only. Yeah, running aggressive offlane just makes your support hurt so much. And he was running around trying to get things done, but, you know, it's it's tough life, level 4 Venge. I think maybe he was a little bit overly concerned with stopping, like, the dewarding in the jungle to make sure Bone7 didn't have anything to kill and Envy didn't have any stacks to go farm, but... If you just sit top, you prevent the like the centaur from doing anything, and BCZ completely free farm. Wait, oh, we hear a grab here on bottom yep. lane, trying onto the tree, and probably gonna bring him down pretty easily here. Uh, Skyrath yeah, is dead. It's gonna throw his ulti. Do you think that's the same way that C9 when they ran aggressive tri lane and let off the pressure on the tri lane? You give too much back away to uh, to the enemy. I just think if you're gonna have a avenge roam. Like, you can't roam on mid. The only reason you go there in the first place is to help G, but G was actually fine. Like, even though Pilot Eye spent some, or not, uh, yeah. He spent some time there, like, harassing a bit. It's like, he was still farming well. He even got a solo kill. Like, why do you need to prioritize G? I just think that if you leave that lane and your carry dies twice because of it, yeah. then it's definitely not worth it. Yeah, true. They're pushing Bone 7 out of lanes. The Joy's playing very aggressive. They know that there is no flaming lasso, so this tower is going to get taken down eventually, so sticking to the game plan. Virtus Pro says, we're gonna five man, and we're gonna take some towers. Yeah, I like seeing this from them. They need to start going. I mean, they're on a clock, definitely. Against Terrorblade, they do not have the tools to deal with him later on. Sure, Legion Commander is fairly good against him, and Overgrowth is a nice spell to have, but you simply are gonna struggle, because Luna has such short range, and when you metamorphosis, TB wins that fight. Well, I guess it also comes down if there's a blame mail or not, if there's illusions or not. But yeah. Yeah, obviously execution can, oh, can change gee. things. He's going to get caught here. Concussive of Jock giving the slow. The masks are coming out and Stampede again, allowing these kills to happen. Centaur not even joining these fights. What a hero. Yeah. I mean, Centaur has had a massive impact in this game. Yeah, and occurring to the, the, the Sedoi and uh, Bone7 offlane players, Bone7 had three lasso ganks by the time that Sedoi's got blink, and that's just the difference of the heroes. That rider could jungle very effectively. Yeah, it's very true. Like, even though the lane was going incredibly even, it's very hard for Sedoi to go to the jungle and kill, like, three stacks simultaneously, whereas Bone7 can do it and make, like, a thousand gold in less than a minute, so... Yeah, it's also... As you say, Lumi, the threat that a Batrider puts on the enemy, whereas Legion Commander doesn't seem that dangerous. And I'm not sure it fits the key timing that you're trying to work on as VP in this game. Because they drafted a Legion Commander fairly late. She was, was the, the last pick. Yeah, yeah, she was the last pick. So, so would you think that something else would be better? Well, I mean, obviously it's decent against Terrorblade, but to the overall style that they're trying to run, it just doesn't really kick in yet. We'll see. I think if... If they could just like trade for a pick, I, I know the heroes banned out. They ju they would just want Jakira, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Well, I think the main reason they pick Legion, to be honest, it's not even TV. I think it's just a Batrider to disengage the lasso on whoever gets grabbed. So if yeah. Luna gets pulled away, if DP gets pulled away, you can protect them with your Legion commander. I think that's the pr like primary focus of the hero. But you need to go as five for that to even be relevant. So far, the game has been very, very split up. Excellent observer ward from Virtus Pro. Getting it. If you're playing support, I think getting that ward down like in this time of the game is really, really good. That's where smokes are all happening. But it looks like smoke into smoke action. Bone seven. He knows he's got the vision. He's got the invis ring as well. 
He can initiate if you want, but it looks like they're going to go right on. But Sado is actually going to get lassoed. He's not doing any damage, and the burst damage is going to be there. Fata, double edge is going to get the kill. Yo, in a ton of trouble as well. Stampede will bring them forward. Yo, he's going to get a little bit of living armor, but he's actually getting burned down. Here comes Aoi. He's bringing the briefcase. He won't get the kill. G trying to do whatever he can. His Yule Scepter's on cooldown. Here comes the Eclipse. He gets one kill, chasing for a second, but Fata's already out of there. Two for one exchange, and looks like... Bone Seven's still stuck, but he should be okay. I mean, that's a low commitment too for one. Yeah. For C9, because they were still not bringing Terrorblade, they were still farming with him. So amazing once again for C9 and delaying the push. Even if it's a one-one trade, and the more important hero was killed on C9 side, I'd still call it a win because do you need everyone for VP to push? Is Bone Seven thinking about initiating here, or he wants to farm the camp maybe? No, he wants to go. He always oh, wants to go. Wow, they find another free kill. Yeah. Well, I mean... You know when Cloud9 plays like this, they look like one of the best teams in the world. They are one of the best teams in the world. Just these games are... few and far between, I want to say. I don't know. I, I just feel like maybe at the beginning of the day, they might not have had VP figured out that much. I think this best of five series is all about adaptation, as we're going to see a Yule's top on the alley, but... He'll yep. be fine. I think it's just they figured out what they need to do against VP to win. And I don't really think there's any other way to say it because you might like kind of click for one game and win. But do you win three games in a row just because of that? I think they had him figured out. But we're going to see a duel here in the river on to Bone 7. G is here as well, throwing out the Crypt Swarm. Is it going to oh. be a win? Unfortunately, no damage for Sadoi, but they do kill the bat. They really need to pick up those wins because I, I think sooner, sooner or later, they need Sadoi to get big. BCG is farming very well. In fact, he's actually gone for the Mask of Madness. I think this is kind of like the, the mini Midas, if you will. Allowed to move between camps very quickly. It's a very, very efficient item, but it also doesn't play towards pushing at 15 minutes or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I think they gave up on that already. I, I yeah. think you're playing for the Ultra Late Game, your six slot Luna, which is, is pretty scary if you get there. Yeah, they definitely want to take this later now. Obviously, want to use the DP for some pushing here, like they are doing. And the respect is coming out from C9. One hero dead, they don't want to defend this. Just going to back off and yeah, try to take bottom. The best one, defender is dead. One thing we haven't really mentioned too much is that VP hadn't lost a tower yet, which is still pretty good, but I think we can all kind of agree that the lineup on Cloud9 doesn't necessarily revolve around killing towers, even though it's good. It's more about making the space for Envy, ensuring that his item progression remains unimpeded for a majority of the game. I mean, his next metamorphosis is going to be really scary because he has Manta Style and an Illusion Rune. Yeah. So next time he has like 35 seconds or something on it. Yeah. When he gets the next metamorphosis, you could maybe take a tower straight off that. I mean, sure, it's VP that has a tower, but if you look at the gold graph, Clown 9's leading in terms of gold. That's always a bad sign. Let's see if Sadoi could change things around. If he finds a real Terra Blade and get a duel off, that can be big, but it looks like he breaks the Invis. And in fact, Initiation is going to come through against GG. Takes the everything. He's going to Yules, though. Can he actually survive? He actually... Well, well, they disengage. Yeah. They don't want any part of that fight. That was a little bit of a mistake on Fata. Mistiming that stun, but hey. Can't always land those. Top lane. Oh, he's pushing already. Yeah, you needed a change down there. The Yules have to really coming into play. If you stay there and fight, you could easily get punished as C uh, C9. So good choice to back off. Not getting greedy. And still, just gonna try and farm up with the Luna. It's not like he's farming terribly, it's just that the Terrorblade is always, I think, gonna farm maybe a little bit faster than you. So. Yeah, I also would say that items are worth more on Terrorblade. You can get so damn scary in the mid game with that hero. Luna is, I mean, she's a scary six slot, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I don't think she wins this one. If you just go oh, into the minion. Oh, Bone7 didn't turn off auto attack. He's still going to go in and try to get a lasso. The stomp is there on the Sadoi. Oh. He's going to burn to death in the Firefly. Yul in trouble as well. TP reaction coming in. It's BZZ. Nice tree and armor coming onto Yul, keeping him alive for the time being. Yeah, also trying to go on Fada here, but oh, BZZ is very Sunset squishy. Yeah, he's got his blink up. He'll be able to get out. Meanwhile, though, top tower has gone down, I believe, to AUI. And mid tower is uh, undefended because all of this teleport square went to the bottom lane. And uh, this is how kind of Terrorblade wins game. Your teammates distract them. You allow the push. You allow the farm. Top uh, top lane. G is gonna looks like he make a go, but easy TP out. In fact, he actually canceled it. Yeah, too bad the Mystic Flare missed completely there. But I mean, you're talking about drums. 
face boots, Yule Scepter, DP. She's so fast, even if you land it perfectly and she walks through she it, out. it's pretty much no damage. Oh, stampede. Got him, gonna get caught here again. Just running around in circles with the fire Solo fly kill. On. Nice flame break timing there. Yeah, I mean, solo kill in the way, but also Centaur always helping out with that ulti. It's a massive thing for C9. But generally with the Batrider, you just can't do something like this, right? Because you just don't, you're not Nyx Assassin. But uh, being able to solo kill supports now is a pretty big deal here for Bone 7. Yeah, I think he could solo kill even, of course, depending on positioning. All right, defensive Earth Splitter being thrown out here by Aoi. G actually just walks into it anyways, like whatever. I'm still at 350, still he's gonna here. pop There's the drums. Oh, oh he's God. dead. Oh my goodness, Cloud9. Uh, All right, G. that double edge hit for 400 damage because of the Elder Titan Spirit. G getting pretty desperate to find something here. You can definitely tell that VP are not comfortable just taking the farm war here. And they shouldn't be double damaged the Rune of Destiny onto Eternal Envy. All right, Fata going to be dropping here. Sadoi finally gets a dual win on the board. I believe that's the first one, yep. First one, yep, plus 14. When the first one is 14, the game has been pretty passive for Legion Commander. Yeah, that's very true. So, I mean, it's not to say that BP are out of the game, but they if they could get this MV kill and get the rush... Oh, he's going to thunder himself. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yep. Even better than tanking yeah. with Illusion, I suppose. There you go. That value. And he's working his way towards Scotty. He's actually going to have it soon. And this yeah. is the time we were talking about, like 25 minutes, Matt to Scotty. That's, that's about where you feel comfortable in being able to just take the game, right? How's, how's the Luna doing? He's got the Yasha for the farm speed. He's got the BKB, I imagine, that's coming next. Yeah. I it mean, this is very be. good farm, but it's just not good enough. It's not terribly good farm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 130 CS, 23 minutes in on Aluna, it's not something you brag about as well. It's decent farm, but she isn't controlling the map because of the Batrider, because of the Centaur. So, VP definitely not where they want to be. They're going to go for a smoke here, try and get some pick off. But I think Cena are just playing really well here, pressuring all the lanes, even with Elder Titan. Yeah. I mean, given the fact that he started as an offensive tri lane, the Luna, and got killed twice, I think it's not bad. But it uh, looks like they're, they're going to pick Aoi here once, mm. which uh, gives them a little bit more dual damage. All right. 14 to 28 in less than, what, two minutes? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, if you get uh, Lysian to be fat enough and she gets a Blade Mail, BKB, etc., later on, yes, she could potentially kill the Terror Blade. You need to find a real one, though. Yeah. yeah. Still not an easy task for, uh, for VP. Long seven. Looking for a pick here. In fact, he's going to grab it on G. Is Stampede going to get used to drag him really Dear far God. back? But who's actually doing the damage? It's going to be sent to a perfect position here. G just gets blown up. Yeah. Wow. I mean, just look at how far he pulled him there. Yeah. Can you even say that G was out of position? You can't really. It's more the fact that they need to be five. Their draft is really good against Batrider. They have swap. They have press the attack. But if they're not going together, they cannot save him. Yeah, I guess... You could argue that Sadoi and the swap was not there, but Sadoi is looking for a pick, but uh, need a little bit more here. Could probably get the damage, but can they win a fight as well? Oh, they're going to go on Pile I Die to duel. Yep, his team is not with him, so yeah. another plus 14. Now, in the river here, y'all are going to get caught as well. Oh my god, yep. And that's another tower, right? No, actually, the creepway is fairly pushed. Yeah, they want to get mid, actually, because mid tier 1 is still standing for VP somehow. The and Trian. The Envy Trian. wants to change that. Yeah. Trian is definitely prolonging these towers. Like, the Mask of Madness gets oh. popped here. Scotty slow, not right, on the actual hero, but he'll, right. he'll just back order tower. Goodbye, tower. Yeah, it was nice knowing you. The deny? Nope, too much not, damage. Not happening against Even TV. Even with the vengeful damage, he still hits for almost 200. Yeah. I mean, the hero is scary, man. Well, he's level 16. He's got Manta Scotty. I guess he just goes Butterfly next. Or, I mean, he could go BKB too. It's not terrible here. He could even go, you know, whatever he wants. He can go Lincoln's. It's not bad this game either. I don't think I've seen him ever go anything that's not a Butterfly. No, he went BKB one game. Or he, okay. maybe it was two games. I don't know. I've definitely seen him do it before. Because the way that he, he sees Butterfly is like, it's a great fighting item when the fights need to be had. And it's a great farming item because he'll flutter 
yeah. every time it comes off cooldown. It's like having a semi hastering of sorts. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the bonus face boots, right? Yeah. It, it's like basically Mask of Madness for Luna right now, like a farming tool. Yeah. It's a very, very good item, and it works so well for your illusions as well. So, would not be surprised to see him go for that. Also, protects you fairly well against the uh, Legion Commander. Yep. Full BKB on Centaur. I guess he will not be carrying so much of the magical output anymore. I'm not really sure what BP is supposed to do at this point. Like, G just has a bunch of random items in his inventory. It's like, okay, oh, enemy. okay, he's just dead actually. Stampede nope, gonna be popped gonna here. Be there, swap. No, it doesn't matter. He's wow, still they're, dead. They're just chasing him down. Stampede used offensively so much. Looks like Luna is actually doing a lot of damage, but I think, well, John, a great ultimate here. Envy taking a ton of damage himself. Uh, Sunder goes off. He's got Aegis. It's two men. Who saw Fata, this game has been absolutely amazing. BZZ trying to run himself out there, but the briefcase, man. Mio Sator pops up BKB. He will get the Envy kill, but Envy's got the Aegis. So Sator runs away. That's an ultra kill on the Batrider. Yeah, and that was a dieback, I believe, from Z, was it? I think he bought back and died again. And here's the thing, Meta's up, Manta's up. Do you just lose at least a tier three here? Yeah, he, he did buy back and die again. Wow, yeah. okay. He got sundered immediately when he came back and then just chased That's down. That's how he got full HP, yeah. Yeah, so this was a massive win for C9 and this is not a push that's going to stop. This gonna is Rax. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not Rax. Definitely they tier three. Blitz. But I still think they can Rax. Like, Envy does so much damage right now and his metamorphosis is still on. Yeah, and you have 20 seconds before anyone relevant comes alive again. Wow, Cloud9 being down 0-2 to start this best of five. It's on the verge of making it to the winner bracket. Well, no, actually, the grand finals vent shows up for a bit. But I, I don't know if you want to show up to swap back in. Yo, Jotham says, oh. what are you doing? Just Jotham kill, and you're still going to die, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, the melee form, the, ra the illusion gets the kill. And it looks like they'll stampede to retreat. They, got, they had enough. They got what they wanted. Yeah, Envy pretty happy with that push. 5,000 gold. Envy might die here. Yeah, he still has Manta. Oh. Manta gets immediately silenced. BZZ has another loot to stun, though. He wants to fight this. Jesus, going into this? Yeah, he actually has Sunder. If he wants to cast it right there, he's losing a ton of health. Can he get off the Sunder? Actually, hasn't he been used, used. It already. He used already yeah. And he's fairly low, but he'll survive. Envy. Okay. Actually, Mordo. GG. GG. And Cloud9 will move to the grand final facing against evil geniuses. What a comeback. All right, so. Poetic Justice was not had this day. Cloud it was Nine very still, close. Still knock out VP after playing them so many. Was that like the fourth time in a row that they've had to play them? Yeah. Something ridiculous like that. It's just we win, we lose, and then we lose two more times and we come back and we win when it matters.